All right, so I got everything I need to do a master cylinder rebuild on the VT. Now, let me just zip this up. I don't want any schmutz on my raw aesthetic movements t-shirt. Represent Penn State hip hop. Don't want any crap on that. So, master cylinder. Now, I didn't think that the master cylinder was the problem with the uh, with the clutch fluid circuit, if you want to even call it a circuit. I'm going to call it a circuit. I don't think that it was the actual issue, but um, it is something that I think is worth um, replacing because this rebuild kit was about 20 bucks, and it's not hard to rebuild a master cylinder. I haven't rebuilt a master cylinder in a long time, but I can't assume it's really any different from any other master cylinder I've ever rebuilt, so let's see what we got. I assume I have all the tools I need to do this, but uh, we'll see. So yeah, I'm going to start by taking off the handle here. I'm taking off this screw, and where did I put... I already lost it. God damn it. Oh, there it is. There's the acorn nut. It's going to go on top there. It's kind of odd that they use an acorn nut. I assume that's not really the one, but okay, here's the handle. I guess it looks fine. Uh, it's just a handle. I mean, what else do really want? So, okay, looking at here. Whoa! There's kind of a lot of movement in here. Maybe that's what I'm... I don't think that's really something to worry about, but... Let's remove some things. Oh! Oh! That's not good. See that rubber gasket? See how it's split? No bueno. No bueno. It might just be a dust cover, but still, you know, want to keep that stuff intact. No, wait, this is the dust cover, and it is split. I guess you couldn't say it's a dust cover. Fluid cover? I don't know, but I'm just going to rip it out. I'm going to replace it, so I don't care. Now, how do I get the piston out? I think there's usually a... Um, it's usually like a circlip or something. Holding this guy on. Let's see. I still don't think that the master is the issue because had the other master cylinder on from the uh, FZR and uh, same issue so I still don't think it's the master but that's obviously worth replacing let's see here I'm not going to struggle with this too much when I could just easily go look at a parts diagram so let's see if it's easily apparent to me maybe the rebuild kit can Give me some clues here as to what exactly needs to get replaced and in what order. That goes in the bin. There's the dust cap. There's a new piston, washer, stopper, spring, and sure enough, there's a big old C clip in there. So that's what I assume is holding the piston in place. I just gotta find this stupid thing. I need a light. Let's see. I think I see it. Should be able to do this without. I 
I gotta find the damn thing. I'm gonna do that off camera. Okay, so literally all I did is I took a flathead screwdriver and went and popped out the rest of this cover here. Straight in the garbage. Don't eat it. Now I see the circlip I need to get out and see if I can. Alright, so basically what I had to do was break the old snap ring. Um, I got a new one anyways, so I don't give a shit. I'll break it. Don't care. Uh, so yeah, here's the rest of the master cylinder. There's a little washer here. Do I have a new one of those? I do. That goes in the garbage. And let's get this piston out. Take a whoops. Okay, here's the bottom half. Looks like the rubber that fits at the bottom here and basically plugs it up, creates pressure, I guess. Um, it looks like it's in okay shape. It's all going to be replaced, anyways, but just want to take a look at it. Here's the rest. Bottom half, and it's really hard for this to, ooh, this is kind of crudded up. Interesting. All right, let's see if there's anything else in here that's worth looking at. Nope. Let's see if I can clean it up a little bit with something. My finger. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Stick a little bit in my shop rag. Jam it in there. Twirl it all around. Spring's still in there, so I'm basically well, something that's allowing me to get in there and really clean it. That looks better. I think I can do a better job though. I wonder if I still have brake cleaner. Now would definitely be the time where you'd want to bust it out. I wonder. I wah 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 wonder. There's still more in here. There it is. That's the rest. So I'll get it right here. And this actually looks like it's in good shape. The spring with the stopper on it. Where is it? There's that stopper. I think there's a part on here that's missing. It's this thing. This little washer right here on this um, thing is all screwed up. But it doesn't do anything to create pressure within the master, I don't think. Mm, no, I don't think so. So I don't think I have to worry about it. But, yeah. All right, let's rebuild it. Voice things voiced. Place that spring and cap. The streets belong to us. I will say this. Let me just look at the other one to reference. It goes on the small end, looks like. Yep. Goes on the small end. That's why it's always good to hold on to your parts before. Not just immediately huck them in the garbage. Just as a reference. That guy goes in. I can see one immediate difference uh, between the two, and that's on the plunger. Um, if you could see the skirt that's on 
this the new one the rebuilt one versus this guy you can see this one's really rounded off this one still has a flare on it so you know it's going to benefit from being replaced also it looks like this is a one piece versus a two piece that's cool too all right so let's replace this guy first spring in here down you go next this guy down you go and now the fun part of the build the rebuild washer now snap ring the new one this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's see if we can get this right. Why is it not going in this side? Mm. The dollar bin circlip oh, wrenches are starting to. Ow, oh, damn it. Oh, it just went. I don't think there's any problem with that coming off. Okay, um, I'm gonna chuck this in the place. The easiest way to do it. don't have a vice, I feel bad for you, son. 99 problems, but a third hand ain't one. Let's push this guy down. I guess I need to let's make sure that this washer is seated in here first. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get the circlip. Is it channel free? Let's just make sure. I'm just checking to make sure that the uh, the, sir, the channel that the sir clip is going to sit in is uh, not being covered. It looks like it's okay. All right. I just get it? No, it can't be that simple. Of course not. There's more to it. Let's try this again. This will take a few tries because I don't have proper tools for this. Do I have it on one side? Let's see. We can just shove the rest down. But it doesn't snap. Oh, I can do that. Yay. Very good. Let's make sure it's in its home. Make sure that the snap ring is seated correctly. It looks like it. Let's give it a few love taps just to be sure. Now we're talking love taps here. I don't want to hit it obviously too hard, otherwise you snap the snap ring. Just making sure. Yep, it's in its home. Cool. Ready. Ta freaking da.
It's in its home. So, let's just make sure that this is holding everything in place and it looks like it is. Sweet. Next up is the boot, which is right here. And that's just. Oh! Oh! I see. It's not supposed to be two pieces. So, this, uh, the end of this, you can see there's a little intersection in there. I'm pretty sure that corresponds uh, to that guy right there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this old rubber gasket off of here so that it can get seated into its new home. And also try not to stab myself. Oh well, good. It's old rotten rubber so that's not too hard to, to break apart and peel off. So this side was in. What did I do with it? There it is. I think that just does this. That should just fit right over it. Well, it should fit right over it. I'll do it like this. Through the bottom. Come on, buddy. Go to your home. Go to your home. It's almost there. I mean, that'll work. No, it won't work, Mike. Come on, do it right. I'm going to take these gloves off. <laughs> Dirty side in, clean side out. Pull it up to try to do it like this. Inside out. Pull gently. We'll see if it wants to go to its home. I think I got it. Let's give it a few spins, make sure it's in there. Yep. Let's recover it the other way. Got it. Cool. So now it's as it should be. Just gonna make sure it's in there with the old screwdriver. Give it some north, south, east, and west presses here. Yeah, it's feeling good. That guy's in there for sure. Yeah, the hardest part about a master cylinder rebuild is that friggin' circlip. And frankly, as you saw, I prefer if I have the replacement part anyways, why struggle? Just break it. You have a new one. Why wouldn't you? So there's a little circle on this part of it that corresponds to this peg here. Let's make sure that that slides in because this can move around a little bit. It'll find its home. And the final part is to put this screw back on. And drop the, uh, if at all possible, drop the, um, drop the, uh, the nut. And make it harder on yourself, please. If, if at all possible, you want to be doing that for sure. It's always good practice to drop things on the floor. 
and never find them again. I feel, at least in my experience. If you want to learn oh, from a pro like me, right? Found it. There is still a somewhat gaping hole in my uh, in my floor that if you watch any of my KZ440 videos, um, I've lost like jets, needle valves, or float valves, stuff like that. Lost all sorts of shit down there. And uh, I, I didn't feel like a big smarty after I did that stuff, so. Is it 10 mil? Just gonna snug it. Obviously, there's no torque spec on this. Just get it snug. We got ourselves a functioning master cylinder. Isn't that nice? Let's just look at the operation again, and it looks good. Everything looks okay. Sounds okay. Sounds like it's sucking and doing all that. Cool. That's your rebuilt master cylinder. Let's put it on the bike. So it's Saturday. Uh, I just got back from Monterey for my little mini honeymoon thing. And I'm going to see if I can't get this thing working correctly today. So what I got, you guys saw me redo the master cylinder. Now I got this. It's a steel braided line for the clutch. And hopefully this will make a difference. Uh, like I said before, usually guys just end up replacing these on these bikes anyways. Um, the problem that usually necessitates this is when the um, brake line or the clutch line gets hot and the clutch stops engaging correctly. It's usually because the rubber actually expands. Steel braided, it's not going to expand. It's going to keep its pressure really nice. So. Swapping this is, is dumb easy, you know, just take off the old line, put the new one in, and then bleed it, and I'll show you some of the things I use to bleed it um, very quickly, because these guys are notoriously hard to bleed, but I think I got bleeding pretty good. I can do it well in a few minutes, so I'm going to get this on there and, um, you know, go from there. Also, these are Galfer from eBay, stickers add horsepower this will add probably about 50 horsepower which is good because this bike probably makes only about like 60 anyways so um with this it should be around 110 horsepower or something like that so the you know a good investment is 50 bucks a little bit you know i'm still under budget but at this point it's like i just want to get the bike done i want to get out on the road i want to you know get it to a point where it looks good and sell the damn thing um, because I really don't have any passion in this project now that the competition's over. So I just want it done. I want it gone. Um, but at the same time, I want to make sure that it's given to someone finished and safe. And um, something that I'll be proud to say, like, okay, I, I built that. And be happy about it. Uh, so, back to work. Not my finest hour. Um, I was trying to bleed the brakes and I was, you know... I was getting pretty far with it, but the one thing that wasn't working was when I was pushing the, trying to, you know, with the master cylinder, push the fluid through, I was getting a lot of backup in here, like it was kind of pushing back up. And also, the lines and the master cylinder were completely bled, but, you know, it, was, it wasn't pushing, you know, like when I would crack the bleeder open and you know, close or activate the master, it was only, it was like just barely moving the fluid forward. So I figured something was wrong and I was right with the assembly of this. I was dumb. So the culprit is this little guy. I put him in backwards. The big end is supposed to be like this. The big end is supposed to uh, basically be like that towards the exit of the master cylinder. I had it like this, so basically it was just kept pushing fluid back up into the master cylinder. So I just flip that, and now it works like it should. Now it pushes fluid through. 
There it was. So if I build pressure with my finger over it, see, it's pushing it out now. So that's how it should work. Let's try that again. All right, so I was right, and it was indeed backwards. So this is now working, right? The lever feel feels better than it ever did. Like it really feels nice and nice and solid now. Um, so the idea here was to pretty much negate the, uh, you know, replace everything that would possibly need to be replaced on the uh, hydraulic side. And that's been done. The slave's been rebuilt, master's been rebuilt, uh, new steel braided line. That's not the issue. We're still not getting where we want to be. Um, clutch is still not disengaging. Although I am getting some real nice movement. You can't see it. Real nice movement out of the uh, out of the pressure. Um, I think it's either something with the assembly or maybe I just need to buy new clutch discs. But to be honest with you, the entire excuse me, the entire clutch assembly there is cheaper than a pre-built, good used um, entire clutch unit. So I might just go and get that. Because if I assembled something incorrectly, it would be a better bet to just take that whole thing out and slap a new one in versus, you know, just getting new clutch plates. It's actually more expensive to get new new clutch plates and fibers. Um, the only downside of replacing the whole thing is I have to take out the uh, this entire side cover. And why I'm reticent to do that is because I'll probably have to replace that gasket because it's so old and, um, you know, it just is what it is. So I might just go ahead and get new clutch plates because for whatever reason, and you can't see this obviously, but for whatever reason, this pressure plate is not sitting far enough forward. Um, basically it's supposed to be in line with these basket arms here and it's recessed and every single clutch basket I look at on Craigslist and, or on eBay uh, the pressure plate is a little bit more forward it's a little bit more it's, it's actually in line with these clutch basket arms so I think that's my issue it's just not being you know it's not being pushed far enough in order to release uh, and also, what kind of goes along with that is when I under torque the nut on this, um, it all works correctly. So, and there's no way in hell I'm gonna like under torque a nut um, just to get it to work right. There's something else wrong. So, I'll, I'm gonna decide whether or not I want to just replace the discs or do a little bit of extra work and just replace the, the unit as a whole. Uh, and I think I might do that, but stay tuned.